They may be a little rough around the edges, but they mean well. The Army cuts my disability pension because they said that the plate in my head wasn't big enough. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie hillbillies. So on your mind, hillbilly? What was I thinking about? Oh yeah, yeehaw, that's right. For this list, we're looking at amusing, though sometimes misguided dyed-in-the-wool hillbillies who have appeared in some of our favorite films. Oh yeah, pretty good life, man. Whether they're from the Deep South, the hills of Appalachia, or from a local podunk town, these hillbillies are not ashamed to let it all hang out. Dinner was full! And we wouldn't have it any other way. Number 10, Bobby Boucher, the water boy. I call the eight tools. He's a down-home boy who rides around on a lawnmower and has a mother who's just a tad overbearing. Somebody hurt you, my boy. Who hurt you? Growing up in the Cajun wilds of Louisiana, he's no stranger to gators and swamps. Mama says that alligators are ornery because they got all them teeth but no toothbrush. <laughs> His mom is a tried-and-true redneck, complete with errant residential farm animals and a hatred of almost all things foreign to her. Foosball? You playing the foosball behind my back? That doesn't stop Bobby from moving up in the world of football, however, and getting the girl in the end. What's gonna happen tonight? <laughs> You'll see. You can do it! You can do it all night long! <laughs> Number nine. Russell Case, Independence Day. Just want you to know that uh, I won't let you down. This good old boy was known for a couple of things before the aliens invaded, being an alcoholic crop duster and being a less than stellar father figure. Are you sure? While he's off drinking and regaling the town with tales of his alien abduction years earlier, his three children are tasked with raising themselves. I'm still your father. No, you're not. You're just the man who married my mother. He does get the chance to redeem himself in the end by sacrificing his life to take out an alien destroyer. So, there's that. All right, you alien assholes! In the words of my generation, up you! Number eight, Bert Gummer, Tremors. Some kind of mutation. What's a redneck without some firepower? This particular hillbilly hero has a massive arsenal that would make most small armies jealous. It's a hobby that comes in handy when subterranean monsters with a taste for human blood come a calling. Broke into the wrong goddamn rec room, didn't you, you bastard? It's also another hat tip to the hillbillies that his character's wife is played by Reba McIntyre, who might as well be the queen of lovable rustic folk. Y'all might have to take something packs more of a punch in that 30-30. Won't you take one of our browning autos? Number seven, Cousin Eddie, National Lampoon's Vacation Franchise. Yeah, I bet you could use a cool one, huh? Now you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> Does he look familiar to you? Ooh, boy. He's rude, he's crude, he's actually even a little bit gross. But hey, he's part of the family. As unfortunate a relative as their hillbilly cousin might seem to the Griswold family, Eddie is a gem for the audience. You know that metal plate in my head? Ah, how can I forget? I had to have it replaced because every time Catherine revved up the microwave, I'd piss my pants and forget who I was for a half hour or so. Between crushing beer cans with his head, and not at all being phased by his daughter getting kicked by a mule. She falls in a well, eyes go cross. She gets kicked by a mule, they go back to normal. I don't know. It's safe to say he wears his hillbilly title with pride. Over here, it's, you know, nothing. But, but here, if this gets dented, then my hair just ain't gonna look right. Number six, Ernest P. Worrell, the Ernest franchise. I can almost hear Johnny Olson right now, Vern. Ernest P. Worrell, come on down. This enthusiastic but moderately annoying fella was more of a diet hillbilly. I know what I mean. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. His permanent denim vest and trucker cap ensemble were definitely evocative of the redneck aesthetic. Yeah, when they hired me as sanitary engineer, they had no idea that I was actually Ernest P. Worrell, man of destiny, ruler of refuse, a man who has taken dominion over his environment. But you could tell he was just a little bit citified. <laughs> Too smart for you, huh? Plus, he was earning a living trying to sell us sodas and used cars. 
Well, come to think of it, maybe he was more of a hillbilly than we originally estimated. How about a bumper sandwich, booger lips? <laughs> Number five, Hi McDonough, Raising Arizona. Call me Hi. Although he's a repeat criminal offender who lives in a trailer in the boonies, he's not an unbearable backwoods felon. I'll be taking these huggies and uh, whatever cash you got. In fact, you're actually rooting for High and his ex-prison guard wife, Ed, throughout the film. You can tell the two love each other. I do. You bet I do. Okay, then. And though they're made foolish through desperation, you can also tell that they would really love a kid. Kidnapping probably wasn't the best way to go about it, but, you know, we all make mistakes. He's beautiful. Yeah, he's awful damn good. I think I got the best one. I bet they were all beautiful. All babies are beautiful. This one's awful damn good, though. Don't you cuss around him. Number four, Tucker and Dale. Tucker and Dale versus Evil. You guys, uh, going camping? <laughs> These two simple folk are just a couple of teddy bears at heart. You are a good-looking man, more or less. You got a damn good heart. Yep. Appearances can be deceiving, and though these two may look intimidating, they're really just trying to enjoy their simple life in the country. You got an inferiority complex. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nope. Their quiet existence is uprooted by a group of vacationing college students whose fear of murderous hillbillies puts them in mortal danger. It's payback time, hillbilly. These two country dudes can't even live in peace without city kids dying around them. Number three, Joe Dirt. I'm Joe Dirt! His mullet is the stuff of legend. Hey, Freak Boy, 1976 called. It wants its hairstyle back. While Joe may be a somewhat unflattering hillbilly archetype, he just wants to be happy. Is this queer? These queer? What's up? What's up? And for this lonely drifter, happiness comes through his crush, Brandy, and his hunt for the birth parents that forgot him at the Grand Canyon. So there I was. A lot of kids would have been scared, but I was all tough about it. He's an affable lout with unyielding optimism, which is probably why so many of the people he encounters gravitate towards him. I tell you what, buddy, I'm gonna give you a free spin. I'm gonna talk to your lady friend over there. How about that? Well, that and who doesn't like a good mullet? I was born without the top of my skull, and I guess a little bit of my brains was showing as grossing everybody out. So my mom put this wig on me to cover it up, and then the bones grew together. Number two, Ricky Bobby, Talladega Nights, The Ballad of Ricky Bobby. Hey, this is, just want to share a little piece of personal information with you. I got a, a chubby right now because this is one of the most awesome experiences of my life because I'm getting it right now. I can't believe it. No one will ever accuse Mr. Bobby of being understated. Well, Dick, here's the deal. I'm the best there is, plain and simple. I mean, I wake up in the morning, I piss excellence. In fact, he's a loud, self-assured man who just wants to go fast. <laughs> and as a top NASCAR racer, he's living the hillbilly dream. Please be 18. His two kids, Walker and Texas Ranger, are growing up with a steady stream of Mountain Dew and Doritos. What is wrong with you? Chip, I'm all jacked up on Mountain Dew! <laughs> I love that. But his life isn't paved in gold, and he must struggle to reclaim his spot in the limelight. The hillbilly life isn't easy. Praise the Lord, baby Jesus. You don't always have to call him baby. It's a bit odd and off-putting to pray to a baby. Well, look, I like the Christmas Jesus best, and I'm saying grace. Before we take aim at our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. You got a purdy mouth. He's gonna be ready to raise all. Like he ain't gonna show up like hey guys. He's gonna show up going, Woo! and we're gonna be like right on. Look at them, they look like okay. Oh, Jesus, early. They look kind of weird. Have you boys accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Yeah, yeah, he's great. Cool guy. Praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. Name's Randy, but everybody calls him Frank Show. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Oh, I forgot about the brother. Number one, the Clampets, the Beverly Hillbillies. We don't. 
They may very well be everyone's favorite fish out of water hillbillies. After striking oil on their property, the Clampets become overnight billionaires and move on up to Beverly Hills. Oil that is, black gold, Texas tea. Watch your head, Danny. In spite of their vast riches, they stay true to their down-home nature, never deviating too far from the permanent denim and dilapidated jalopy. And even when they find themselves in the middle of a scheme that threatens their wealth, it ain't nothing a good shotgun blast can't fix. That's real nice, son. This here's what I carry. Do you agree with our list? Not exactly what I call constructive criticism. Who's your favorite movie, Hillbilly? Paradise is someplace like Beverly Hills, California. They got swimming pools mm -hmm. and movie stars. For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. That thing had nine lives. She just spent them all. <laughs> Woo! <laughs>